All right, folks, we're back from our final messages of the show. Thank you for staying tuned. We're going to get into our Halloween candy tier list, and I'm going to have some trivia at the end of the show for you because I do want to add a little bit for that. That's a little bit of the last thing that you want to check out. But let's do this candy tier list. So I'm using someone else's tier list, but it's got the, the vast majority of the basics here. So want to go through that. Their system, which I thought was actually quite fun. They have the S tier, which they're calling it goaded. Ridiculous on that terminology, but it's fine. A, yummers. Also ridiculous, but I think it's funny. B, this will do. C, which is trading fodder. D, colorful garbage. And F, how dare you? And their final is X, which is they've never had it. I love the transparency there. You've seen me be quite transparent on this show throughout all of our episodes, so I really wanted to have that. That's why I was drawn to this list when I saw it, because I was like, oh, we can just be honest, and it's great, and it's less work for me to do. So, without further ado, let's begin. I understand for our audio listeners, you don't have this on screen, and that's a okay. So, we're going to start with the 100 grand bar. 100 grand bar, I'm going to take all the way up to... In A, uh, the crispy rice texture with the caramel and chocolate, glorious, great aidless tier. Uh, Three Musketeers, on the other hand, I'm gonna go B in the this'll do category. Enjoyable, but it doesn't have that that wonderful richness that the caramel that a hundred grand bar has. That's why I go to Three Musketeers. In Airhead, that in Airhead, I think it automatically goes to the A. I'm gonna put a lot of stuff unless I know for a fact it belongs in S. It's going to go in A, and then we'll probably reevaluate. And Airhead is just perfect. The problem with I have with Airheads is the var- variability. Everyone has such a different opinion on what's the best flavor and what's not. Personally, I think the best flavor is orange. I love grape, but they're not really doing grape anymore. Uh, but the basic that's always there that I love the most is the red cherry. Uh, blue raspberry is good, but then when you start getting into mystery, green apple, strawberry, not as much of a cup of tea. Loved when they did lemon back in the day. I wish they would bring that back as well. Almond Joy. I'm going to put Almond Joy in X. Never had it. I think I've had an Almond Joy. It's just been a long, long time. Don't recall enough about it. The, <sighs> Coconut's not my cup of tea. So you're going to see that with a few of these candies. That that is just not my, my cup of tea. Whereas the Andes Mint. I think the Andes Mint is A. Actually, you know, I'm going to take Andes to the B. I actually love the Andes Mint here. The issue I have with the Andes Mint, though, is it's a one-off. You know, whereas, like, you gave me, if you had my Halloween basket back in the day, and I had just full 100 grand bars, I would just eat constantly. Where with the Andes Mint, it's great, but you need one or two as a refreshment. You can't just keep downing them um, like a kid would love to have in the category. So that's, that's why I'm putting it in B. It's a great candy. It's just not a... A continual candy that you want to do with Halloween because let's be honest here the people the kids that had the self-restraint only eat a couple pieces of candy I was not one of those it was go through the candy as fast as possible kind of kid so that's why I, I am the way I am Apple is in this here I'm gonna put Apple into first of all I love apples apples one of my favorite things when I got my braces off the first thing I did was go eat an apple because I missed it for years to have one. And that I found any way possible to get an apple in me safely without damaging my braces while I had it. So an apple belongs in the S tier because it's great. I'm going to put it down in X because I don't think it belongs in the candy category. But I wanted to touch on that. And I love that they brought the history of uh, apples, bobbing for apples in the fall for Halloween. I like that they had it on this list, so we'll talk. Uh, baby Ruth. I'm going to put this in trading fodder. I like a Baby Ruth. It's not my favorite. It, it's just kind of there. Um, but I like the peanut to it. It's great. Uh, the random orange and black wrapped candy. That's an F. That's a how dare you. Um, every kid's probably tried it once or twice. Um, as I grew older, I definitely was someone who wished to try the candies that I got. Uh, that was an insult. They both, I don't understand why anyone likes those. Those who do... Uh, 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 Flying Spaghetti Monster help you. Bit of Honey. Uh, I also think that's an F. I don't understand the Bit of Honey. Actually, I'll go to D. I wasn't crazy about it, but I don't know if it's in the How Dare You. I'll go to Colorful Garbage. I could see it being an F, but I don't think it's as offensive as the orange and black unspecified wrap candy that make no sense. Butterfinger. Butterfinger is one that went up. I used to hate Butterfinger. Now I love it. 
Uh, I'll put it into B because I don't think it's still the best, but I think it's pretty damn good. Candy corn. This is a controversial opinion for many. I absolutely adore candy corn. I'm going to put it in A. For me personally, that is an S tier candy. The problem is the likelihood of getting good candy corn <laughs> based off of any brand is way too wide of a margin. That's problematic. And I don't want that in my life where they're good candy corn. Chef's kiss. Glorious. Like a Brock's candy corn. Oh, I love it. Generic, non-branded candy corn can truly be F how dare you though. So I'm going to put candy corn in the A because I absolutely adore it, but the variability doesn't allow it to be in the S tier. Here's one I've never seen, the Milky Way Caramel Apple. Uh, a Milky Way by itself is phenomenal. I've never had the Caramel Apple, but that sounds like something I would absolutely adore because, as you heard, I love apples. Um, so I'll be hunting down that candy if I can. Crunch Bar. Uh, I, I think Crunch Bar is pretty basic here. Um, I'm going to go into trading fodder. It's fine, but this wasn't the candy I was super excited about, and I, I don't see a lot of people that are like, need a Crunch Bar. That's just not uh, dots. Dots, I'm going to put in the D, colorful garbage. I actually like dots, but original dots, one little box every once in a blue moon. I was like, okay, tropical dots? That shit's tasty. Love that. And actually, the ghost dots are not bad during Halloween season, the specialty themed ones. But then they have a lot of dots, just. Uh, so we're going to go colorful garbage over on that one. Now we'll continue here with double bubble. This is colorful garbage um actually i'm gonna go all the way to harold f with how dare you on the double bubble gubble double bubble bubble gum there we go here's my issue with it it's just kind of eh. it's just a little burst of sugar out of nowhere and then it's done and it's bland so no <laughs> no i'm gonna go to how dare you Good and Plenty. I, I don't recall having Good and Plenty. Uh, it's like an Almond Joy. I know I've had it, but I don't think I've had it enough for me to actually have an opinion on it. I think I tried it once and wasn't impressed, but whatever. Haribo, the gummy bears. So I think this is supposed to signify gummy bears in general, but they used Haribo here. I actually love Haribo. Um, I really enjoy their products. The thing about it is, is also there is a bias here. The Haribo, uh, the Haribo company actually donates a lot of money and does a lot of programming and education stuff with, with my alma mater, University of Wisconsin Parkside. So they always get my business in terms of, oh, hey, they do a lot for my school so that when... You know, when I was in childcare or when I was getting Halloween candy, if we were getting gummy bears or a gummy product, I'd usually go Haribo simply out of brand loyalty because they did a lot for uh, the school I went to and I always appreciated that. But in general, I actually do like their product. I think it's pretty good. I'll put it in a B because I don't think it's the best. And I don't think gummy bears in general are the best, but they really can hit the spot sometimes. So I'll put that in a B. Heath Bar. Again, I think a Heath Bar is something now I probably would enjoy but I, I don't recall loving it in the past but i don't i don't think i have enough of it to really do it now here's an interesting one anyone passing out hershey kisses for halloween that's insanity however when you get it the cookie and cream one or the or the you know vanilla chocolate swirl that is an s tier candy it is so good love that swirl of chocolate and vanilla absolutely adore that white chocolate there it's so good that's S tier. The idea of passing out a Hershey's Kiss for Halloween, though, that's pure insanity. Anyone who just goes, oh, here's some Hershey Kisses, get the fuck out of here. However, the white chocolate, milk chocolate swirled one, glorious on its own. So we got to love that. Whereas a basic Hershey Kiss, it's fine. I, I'm not going to go colorful garbage. It's trading fodder. No one's going to trade for it, but it's fine. It's enjoyable, but that's the kind of thing where you want a little burst of sugar, and the only thing around is that you, you'll settle for it, but you're not like, I want a Hershey Kiss. That's not how it goes. B. 
basic Hershey bar. I'm going to go to, into the the trading fodder again. A basic Hershey bar. It's chocolate. It's good, but it's not what you're looking for. Meanwhile, this is surefire the best one of all of them uh, for the most part here, and that is the cookies and cream Hershey bar. I don't know many candies that are better than that. There's not much that can rival it. I absolutely adore it. If someone said I can only have one candy, you have to recommend one, this would be on the short list of ones where I'd be like, we got we to gotta possibly talk about this one. The Hershey's Cookie and Cream Bar. Chef's Kiss, it's fucking delicious. Hot Tamale, I'm not actually a fan of Hot Tamale. And I love cinnamon. I love uh, those flavors as much. But it just kind of... I'm going to go as far as how dare you. Because it just... It brings heat for no reason. It doesn't have a whole rhyme or reason to it. Those that like it, I understand that they like it. But it's, it's just kind of... It how dare you, because what does it really bring to the table as a candy? Not much. Jolly Rancher. I think a Jolly Rancher here... <sighs> many a tooth loss to the Jolly Rancher. I'll go into this old do. You know, the B. I think it's fine. It's nothing tremendous. But good passable candy. Junior Mint. I actually love the Junior Mint. I'm going to go back to the B category as well. I actually love Junior Caramels. Prefer those. If you ever have those. My issue with the Junior Mints goes back to the same thing with the Andes Mints. Like, the idea of a Junior Mint being that box size is absurd. Because who actually goes through an entire box of Junior Mint? In, like, one go around, like, if it was a, as a movie theater candy or something like that. They don't. You know, few of them, super refreshing, delicious. But you're, it's not a, a session candy, if you will. You know, it's as if we were going into beer. I'm straight edge, I don't drink, I don't do drugs, but I'm from Wisconsin. I know enough about beer to understand things. <laughs> you know, there are singular beers and there are session beers where you have it over time. You know, a junior mint is not a session candy. It's a get a little bit and get the fuck out. So I'll put it in the B category. Uh, Kit Kat. Love me a Kit Kat. Kit Kat goes to the B category again. <laughs> A good Kit Kat is a game changer, but I just don't know how often you really need a good Kit Kat. So I'll go with B. Meanwhile, the Crackle Bar, that is an S tier. Ooh, A tier. A tier. For now. It's probably going up to the S tier. I absolutely love the Hershey's Crackle Bar. Again, that, 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 that crispy rice inside the chocolate is fucking delicious. Anyone tells you otherwise, it's wrong. Now, now we're to Laffy Taffy. So this is interesting. Laffy Taffy, I absolutely adore. The fact that they started with banana here as their reference image, that's fucking crazy. I'm going to have to put Laffy Taffy again in the B category because the variability is way too wide. I absolutely, my favorite Laffy Taffy, they don't make anymore. And if they do, it's in like very, very, very specific little batches. Again, when I was tracking down prize candy or things of like that for childcare, I was always trying to get more of the exotic flavors or some of the flavors that they didn't make as much anymore to expose uh, our kids to, you know, just a, a little bit of different stuff. I absolutely love the Tropical Punch Laffy Taffy. That is S-tier goaded all day long. Whereas a Banana Laffy Taffy is a... That is what sat at the bottom of my Halloween basket and did not return. That was the depths of Loch Ness. And I only ate it out of desperation when there was nothing left. It's and so the variability on Laffy Taffy is way too much. I'll put it in a B because the vast majority of them are really good and very tasty. And you get that banana one, it's just like ugh, gross. No one wants that. No one wants that. No one needs that. So let's not do that. Interesting that they went with lemon head, they went to chewy lemon head. Lemonheads in general, I absolutely adore. Love citrus. Chewy lemonheads are also great. I'm going to go to A category. A lemonhead by itself could get me all the way to S. I love lime heads, cherry heads, all of the variations of it. They're all great candies. It's how much you can have in a session that takes me a little away, though. Um, I like how I keep saying session. I don't do that anymore. I don't eat candy in sessions like I used to as a kid or as a teenager, hence the reason my dental health was in the place that it was. Uh, it's finally kind of turned around because I've learned how to be somewhat adultish in my eating habits and my treat habits. I've evolved to being a baked goods guy. <laughs> However, 
um, even now I, I look and the idea of dousing myself in that much sugar with a lemon head or a lime head sounds so good, but then I look at the, the toll of that much sugar and I just go, oh, I don't know if I can handle it. But it's A tier. It's delicious. It's worthwhile. Fun dip. Uh, here's a controversial opinion for you. It's colorful garbage. Those that like fun dip, I'll never understand it. I had that around some of my staff members back in the day when I was managing staff, and I meant it as a prize for kids, and that was one of the items that they took the most when they needed a quick pick-me-up, and I thought they were insane. Fun dip is wildly overrated. It's a gimmick candy. Gimmick candies usually suck. Molo cup. Uh, not a fan. I think that can go all the way to the how dare you. I've only had it a couple times, but I've had enough recently that I just... Marshmallow candy in general is not good. It's just not. Let's just stop lying. It's not good. So that's where a model cup belongs in the how dare you category. Mike and X. Uh, Mike and X, I'm going to go to trading fodder, and that's a C. There's really good Mike and X. I love the Mike and X lemonade candies. I think they're delicious. But again, it's too much variability. Where a normal Mike and X is just kind of meh. It's just kind of meh. And... And there's too many good categories to justify getting that. Whereas, like, a Mike and Ike Lemonade, glorious. We love that. We're going to move on. Another one of my absolute favorites, the Milk Dud. I adore Milk Duds. Many a tooth I've lost to a Milk Dud. And I could argue it's possibly worth it. Uh, chocolate and caramel is obviously a big thing for me. Um, actually, I might take it down to A. The hardness of the caramel... And chocolate on it, just in terms of density, is a little rough. However, it tastes so good. It tastes so good. How are you going to fight against it? So milk does an A. Milky Way by itself. That's going up to A category right away. You're, you're seeing I like a lot of chocolate. And caramel. I like a lot of the fruit candy, though. It's just a lot of variability. Um, basic M&M. Again, that's trading fodder. A basic m and is good. It'll get you through. It's not necessarily what... I'm looking for in terms of a basic m and I really like using uh, M&Ms in, in cookies or other baked goods. I like baking with them. That's where I use a lot of my M&Ms in terms of basic M&Ms. So they're fine. They're trading fodder. They're a C, but they're fine. Uh, mounds, again, I don't. I think I've had a Mounds bar maybe once. I'm going to go into the never had it category because I don't have a lot of recollection of it. Again, coconut, not my cup of tea. I don't really understand the appeal of coconut. Meanwhile, the Mr. Good Bar. I think a Mr. Good Bar is wildly underrated. I really like the Christmas of the crispness of the peanut in it and the chocolate to it. Mr. Good Bar is actually pretty good. It's the candy that I avoided a lot as a kid. My grandmother, growing up during the holidays, always had from Halloween through like January. She always had it in the house, but specifically Halloween through January, she just always had the Hershey miniatures. And what always kind of struck me was how we always had to have them in the house when around with her. <laughs> and Mr. Goodbar was always the one that just got skipped for adults. You know, myself, my brother, and then eventually when my cousins uh, got into the picture, that we all did the same thing. We, we loved the Crackle Bar. We'd eat the basic Hershey Bar. Um, when occasionally they throw... A caramel one into the variety bag. We always went for that. Good bar was always the one that we're like, meh, no need for this. Now eating more as an adult, I think it's great. It's an underrated candy. I'm going to go with B. Uh, Neko. This is how dare you. These Neko wafer sugar bullshit candies, I know they've done a sour variety that I did like a little bit more, but that's just, it's so basic. It's like eating chalk. That's a how dare you. Nerd. Uh, nerd's a candy that I liked as a kid way more than I like as an adult. I'm going to put Nerd's... Ooh, this is controversial. because I, I like... I'll go to Trading Fodder. I'll go to C. Here's the thing. Nerd's, the people who love Nerd's, love them. The people who don't like Nerd's, hate them. It, it's, it, there's not a lot of like spectrum on Nerd's. Nerd Cluster, those are fucking delicious. Like a Nerd Rope and the Nerd Clusters, that's the best variety of a Nerd. 
basic nerds just by themselves, the little candies. It's just kind of like, why? <laughs> nerds are the lens of a kid versus the lens of an adult. That's really what nerds are. Kids go, oh my god, that's so cool, and it's just little bits of sugar. Whereas an adult, you see a nerd and you're just like, why? Like, what the fuck are we doing here? So I think that's where I would put a nerd, is in the sea with the trading flag. Now and later, again, now and later, the density really strikes me. I'll go into colorful garbage. It's not that it tastes bad. Some of them are passable. Some of them are good. Some of them are great. Some of them are great. The chewy now and laters, I'm, I'm much more of a fan of. Now and laters just are a candy that don't make sense to me. Because, like, at least with a milk dead, it melts in your mouth. That density eventually softens and it's really nice it's a delicious flavor now and later it's theoretically supposed to be like a fruit chew candy but it's too fucking hard to chew half the time and you have to just leave it in your mouth for just assuring cavities half the time to make it function that's right it's colorful garbage it's a d payday payday is a, a c category it's fine chocolate and the peanut i just i don't know what it is about the caramel that they use uh inside of a payday but it's just something off about it it's just something off it's not as good as some of the other caramel candy uh other m&ms here so we have the peanut or the peanut butter m&ms i have actually never really tried them but actually that's a lie i have had them i really enjoyed them the last time i had them. i'll go into the b category they are quite good uh they're a little rich but that's totally fine with me the peanut butter snicker bar, I think I've only had once. I don't remember having a lot of opinions on it. I'll put it in the never had it. Uh, the goaded tier will have the addition of the peanut M&M. The peanut M&M is the, by far, my opinion, the best variety of an M&M. You can't go wrong with an M&M, but the peanut M&M, holy shit. That goes back to childhood as well. I will confirm my own biases in this, but there's more substance to the, the peanut M&M, which I really appreciate. But the thing about it is, going back to the bias, my grandfather, who made zero sense biologically, physically, emotionally, like, he, he, he was a character. He was a character. Just kind of, you know, in some ways, good old country boy, but in some ways, evolved to be very welcoming to people. It was He was a strange cat. But there was always... An open bowl of peanut M and M's throughout his house, at all times. And he could, you could always tell when my brother and I were around, but specifically when I was around, because those peanut M and M's went quickly. He had to have bags and bags of peanut M and M's around his house, especially when we were around, because all three of us just constantly would be chomping on them. So it's just interesting. It's kind of a, a one of those weird family staples that we have in my family that goes back to him, but. A peanut M and M is so fucking delicious. It's obviously the S tier goat. Gotta love it. Quarters. That was our next thing. Again, that doesn't make sense that the apple. Uh, obviously, it's great to get money, but like, who gives quarters away at this point for Halloween? I think that's happened to me once in my life. Just we'll go into the never had a category. Alrighty, back to candy. Raisinette. Actually, I don't know if I've had a Raisinette. Because the concept offends me. A chocolate-covered Raisinette, it's... A chocolate-covered Raisin is just stupid. Why waste chocolate on a Raisin? Dumb. Uh, Reese's Peanut Butter Cup, that's obviously tremendous. Great candy, we love it. It's an S-tier. Classic. It's one that's still, I believe, the most popular candy on the market. It's tremendous. Gotta love it. Reese's Pieces, on the other hand, I'm actually not crazy about Reese's Pieces, which is insane because I love peanut butter chocolate combos. I'll go trading fodder here at the C rank. It kind of holds a similar place to the, the original M&M for me. Again, I love using it in baking, but I don't find it that all that great as a candy by itself. Ring Pop. Here may be controversial for people. Uh, it's a how dare you. Here's my issue with Ring Pop. It is an illogical candy to eat. It's an illogical candy taste-wise after the thing. It's not that it inherently tastes bad, but, but even as a kid, when you probably shouldn't care that much about shit, it drove me fucking insane when you'd have a ring pop 
And then if you actually wore it like you were supposed to, you just get slobbery, weird chocolate saliva all over you because you gotta like suck a ring pop to make it even remotely close to good. It just, it pisses me off. That's how dare you. It's not necessarily that the taste is bad. The concept is flawed. The idea of making ring pops part of a costume or something like that, ingenious, fun, love that idea. Actually eating a ring pop is fucking stupid. And I'm against it. Runs. Uh, runs, again, chewy runs. I believe back in the day, I enjoyed those. Runs by themselves. Colorful garbage. They don't offend me as much as the F category, but they're close. Just, again, it's kind of just like eat chalk. D do you need that? I don't think you need that. Skittle. Skittle. Here's a controversial one. Um, I'm going to put Skittles in C. I used to love Skittles. And now I kind of just avoid them. Maybe that's just how my taste has evolved, but they're just kind of it's kind of whatever. That's how I feel about a Skittle now, so we'll go Skittles into a C rank. Smarties will go to a D. They are the improved version of a Neko. It's not bad. It's fun to get like the Smartie necklace. Uh, sour Smarties do exist. I enjoy those a little bit more. But again, you're kind of just eating little pieces of chalk. Eh, not necessarily the greatest. Uh, going back to Skittles quick, I like the variety of Skittles. I think that's really good. Just never really, like, wows me. I think I recently had a sour Skittle and just went, why did I eat this? I think that was my reaction to Skittles the last time. Snickers, that's S tier. Uh, Snickers is the, is the creme de la creme for me. Snickers and peanut M&M is probably between my most consistent favorite candy. I would always sneak those two as much as possible and adore that. Sour Patch Kid. I know there's a lot of Sour Patch Kid fans out there. I'll put it in a B category. It's not bad. It's just kind of a little one note ish. Not that every, not that most candies aren't. A lot of candies are one note ish. I think that's why I like the candies that I do. If you look at my S tiers, it's a lot of chocolate and caramel and peanut or things of that nature. There's some variety to them. Sour Patch Kids, anyone who's like, oh no, all the different flavors. There's not that much of a discernible difference in the Sour Patch flavor. It's just kind of the utter shock of a Sour Patch Kid hitting your palate. It's fine. It's enjoyable. It's fun. I, me personally, I'm not going to lie. I might take it down to a C. I think that's where a Sour Patch Kid is. It's kind of meh for me. Starburst. Again, I love the variety of a Starburst. I'll take Starburst up to a B. I absolutely love the mini Starburst. That's actually my favorite go-to now. Um, and by go-to, I mean I was what my go-to was almost 10 years ago when I was really doing a lot of candy uh, movie theaters or things of that nature. I love a mini Starburst. I like a lot of the rando flavors of Starburst that you can find when you're really searching for different candies. Basic Starburst. Cherry and orange, I'm a big fan of. The uh, lemon and strawberry ones with the yellow and pink. Meh, take or leave it. You can have them. If we were sharing the bag, I would take all the reds and the oranges, and you could have the yellows and the pink. Here's another controversial one for many people's opinion. The strawberry candy that's wrapped and looks like a strawberry. I fucking love that candy. <gasps> we lost our tier list. All right, we're back to our tier list. The strawberry candy, where'd you go? You are not in D whatsoever. I love the strawberry candy. I actually think it's great. I know that's controversial. As a Halloween candy, kind of insane to give out. It's kind of like the Hershey's Kiss. However, I think it tastes fucking great. And it, here's what I think. Like, Airheads, Lemonheads, and the strawberry candy all have one thing in common that kind of goes against some of my logic in this. Unabashedly, it is just one sugar taste. It's straightforward and knows what it is. But then there's just a little bit of variety in there to give you enough of a zhuzh to get it over the top. The inside of the sweetness, but then the tart sweetness on the outside with the strawberry candy is underrated. I think it's great. It's one of the best old people candies you can find, and I will push that till the day I die. Sugar Daddy. Uh, I think I've had a Sugar Daddy once in my adult life. I wasn't impressed. I don't get the appeal of them, but we'll go into Never Had It because I don't have enough about it. 
Swedish fish, I'm going to put that in C. I don't get the love for Swedish fish, but I don't think they're bad either. It's just kind of like, okay, Swedish fish. Fine. Sweet tarts. I like sweet tarts, sort of, but they're just... I'm going to go to colorful garbage. You don't need them. Sweet tart minis that are kind of like Smarties, I think, is the best variety of them. I also used to love the giant chewy sweet tarts. Those were kind of fun, but yes, they were just hard and didn't make a whole lot of sense either. You had to like kind of suck on them a little bit to make them soft enough to be chewy, so it didn't inherently make sense. They were strange products. Sweet tarts are fine. They're fine. We could do better. Toothbrush. Um, <laughs> I'm almost tempted to say never had it, but that's ridiculous. I love my toothbrush. I love my dental health. Now I'm very conscious about my dental health. You have to be if you're a big a fan of sweets as I am. To get a toothbrush during Halloween, though, is a how dare you. However, I don't think I've actually... Mm, maybe. I think I've gotten a toothbrush once during Halloween. So... And I was offended. Just because it was like, who do you think you are? Like, you're not going to change anything. You think during this night that's all devoted to candy seeking from strangers, we're thinking about dental health? No, we're barely thinking about our own health and our well-being. We're thinking about give me the fucking candy. So who the fuck do you think you are giving a toothbrush? However, I've only come across it once. I don't think it's inherently bad. I think the one I got, I at least sort of appreciated because they packaged it with other candy. So they're like, hey, we know you're going to eat candy. It's fine. Just remember have a little bit of dental health, and it was kind of like, all right, fine. We'll, we'll, we'll take that under advice. Moving forward, we have the fruity Tootsie Rolls. They're not fruities. Those are different. These are the fruit-flavored Tootsie Rolls. A fruity is smaller and with more variety. I like the fruit-flavored Tootsie Roll. I actually think they're quite good. I like the variety to them. The consistency gets chewy enough quickly enough that I think it's quite good. And... The only thing that insults me is that the blue is a vanilla, which makes no sense. Why is it wrapped in blue? You could easily have a blue raspberry flavor or something of that nature. That would be much better. But what the fuck are you doing making it blue? That's the only thing that really offends me. I enjoy the candy. Tootsie Pop. Tootsie Pop, that, that's a B. Classic. Solid. Love it. Like the variety to it. Clearly was the kid who just chonked on it and didn't lick it to make sure it was better. So that is something that I will admit to. I was never the kid that licked it to get to the center of it. I just went, no, what are you talking about? This is what it's supposed to be. And no, that's not what we're here for. We're here for getting to the center of it and having some fun. But the coating is nice, so I appreciate it. I like a Tootsie Pop. I think it's quite good. Tootsie Roll. I actually love the original Tootsie Roll. I think it's better. It's a little gimmicky in a weird way, which is so fun. I know a lot of people that hate Tootsie Rolls. This was uh, this is another controversial one by many people's opinions for me. Is this. I would actually be one... When I did trade candy from time to time, Halloween style, I was the kid who would take the Tootsie Roll. Which a lot of people would. I actually would always take the Tootsie Roll. A lot of the Tootsie Roll packaging I did like. I loved getting those variety packs. It's also something I always bought when we were buying Halloween candy for the neighborhood when we started passing out as adults. Was I always got the Tootsie Roll variety pack, the fun pack, whatever the hell it was, because I think Tootsie Rolls, the fruit flavored ones, and uh, the big chonker chocolate Tootsie Roll is actually quite good. Dots are the weak point, but dots are passable. So I will always trade for a Tootsie Roll. I think it's great. Twix. Twix is an A. That cookie crisp crunch plus the chocolate plus the caramel. It's a great intuitive candy design. Gotta love a Twix. And it also has a great Seinfeld episode based on it, so you should go check that out as well. It's in the car dealership. It's in, it's in the car dealership episode, which is episode... It's in the middle of season nine. But it's fucking great. Go check it out. Because we love Seinfeld. It's the greatest television show of all time, and that is the official opinion of the Onetto Show. Twizzler. They're giving this one, which is the traditional chonky twizzler that's not good the pull and peel twizzler on the other hand is great 
I'm going to put it in D, colorful garbage for now, because I think the variety of Twizzlers that they're giving, especially with the pull and peels now, has really brought the quality up. But just the original Twizzler by itself is not good, so we'll go into D. Sour Punch Straws. These are great. This is a gimmick that knows what it's doing. I'm going to go all the way to A category with this one. If a sour candy understands the gimmick and just goes straw it and is unabashedly about itself, it's great. Plus, here's the difference. I spoke about some other fruit flavored candies that say there's a ton of difference, and there's not. Mike and Ike's, I certainly get that issue from. Uh, you know, <laughs> Sweet Tarts, kind of a similar thing. Sour Patch Kids, I don't think there's a ton of discernible difference. I think Sour Punch Straws actually do have a difference once you get there, and I enjoy them. So they're going to go in the A category. Warhead. This is a total gimmick candy, but I love it. The Black Cherry is still one of my absolute favorites. It's a gimmick done right, and if you do the gimmick right, it's good. And that's that. Just that burst of sourness, then to get a, a sweet suckling candy is good. we got to love it. Weird way to say suckling candy. I don't know if anyone needed to really hear that, but nonetheless. Good fucking gimmick. I like a warhead. Werther's, chocolate, Werther's caramel. Again, that's going towards an old people candy. I'll fight for it tooth and nail. I think it's A. I think it's another good old people candy, and it's delicious. Anyone who tells you, I don't want that, if you offer it to someone and they don't take it, that's insane. Unless you're giving it to some weird unwrapped candy, like it's the DraftKings commercial of Kevin Hart and on James. Unless it's that, people who don't accept a Werther's Caramel, shame on you, because they're fucking delicious. Great old people candy. Whoppers. Whoppers I had a fun run with. I think they're going to go into colorful garbage in the D category. They're fine, but not enough chocolate to balance out that hard, hard whatever the hell is in the middle of it. It's like, how do you even describe it? I'm going to go to Colorful Garbage. And a York Peppermint Patty. Again, it could be kind of considered an old people candy. I think a York Peppermint Patty is fucking delicious. The York Peppermint Patty, ironically enough, doesn't suffer from the same fate as the Andes or the Junior Mints because it has just enough substance to be something a little bit different and really refreshing. It balances out with the chocolate enough that it can bring it to that higher level that a lot of the mint candies can. Now, in quick review, I think I have to move the 100 grand bar into the S category because it's fucking delicious. I'm going to keep a lot of the other stuff the same. I am tempted to go further up with the Milk Dud, but I'll keep it there. And a Crackle Bar is just... It's a 98, 99, but is it 100? I'm not sure. So that's where we're going to go. So in the S, go to tar the S category, which is goaded by this tier list. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight candies. A list. You're going to ten categories with a lot of old people candy. Candy corns involved in there, the strawberry wrapped candy, the Werther's caramel, maybe a York peppermint patty could be considered that, or even the crackle bar from Hershey could be considered an old people candy. Those are all great. I like old people candy. B, those categories we're going to 14 and the B category. This will do. It's good passable candy. C, the trading fodder. Some popular stuff. We have 12 candies there. D, the colorful garbage category. We've got nine candies. Those candies that just kind of don't make sense. Gimmicks done wrong, things of that nature. How dare you category. We only have six things. The weird orange and black wrapped candy that don't really have a brand, don't really make sense. Double bubble bubble gum. Hot tamales. Mallow cup. The Neko weird chalk wafers, and the ring pop, which is going to be controversial for some, but whatever. And then we had some candies and other gimmicks for Halloween that I've never had or I don't think are super official. Well done for this list. That is our official tier list here for Halloween of Halloween candy. I hope you enjoyed it. That was a fun activity to do. Let's go do some trivia. Trivia.